If, if, if um, you don't get anything else out of this other than just the entertainment of watching it, is that God is in the process of making us into beautiful things. What did God make us out of? He made us out of the dust of the earth. And we are of the earth. But we have an awesome God who is able to create and shape us into the vessels for holy purposes to be used in his kingdom, in his dwelling place. That is an amazing thing. And this clay has water in it and it's soft. And I'm going to tell you a couple of properties of clay that uh, will help you understand why I'm able to do what I can do on the potter's wheel. Also, I want to make sure you understand God says about himself, I am the potter. The t-shirt says it. I'm not the potter. I am a potter, but he is the potter. And I am clay, just as all of us are. So, this morning, or this afternoon, is I, I, I demonstrate some of the qualities of clay. And these are qualities, I think, that each one of us uh, and, and I liken the moisture or the water in the clay because without the water in the clay, it will not, you cannot do much with it. It's just dust. But one of the things I think that God has taught me in the time that I have known him since he called me to himself is that with the Holy Spirit, which is the water, the spirit, it enables me to be flexible. Folks, if we're not flexible without breaking, we got a problem. We need more of the Holy Spirit. So the water also enables the clay to stick to other clay. And one of the things that I see today in the churches, and we've been visiting a lot of churches, are people that don't seem to be able to stick together. We as a body of believers, if we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are His, should stick. It's the Holy Spirit in us that enables us to do that because we all have that in common. We are His. Okay, so one of the things, too, that is very important is that clay is very impressionable. When I say impressionable, this is a piece of clay. It has a snowflake on it. It's been fired in the kiln one time. But, but clay is very impressionable. And folks, you have to be careful who you allow to, to make an impression on you. If you let the world make an impression on you, then you're going to look like, act like, and talk like, and think like the world. Whereas if you allow the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ to make an impression on you, you're going to look just like the original. You're going to look like Christ. And that's his goal, is to transform us into his image. Okay, and it's not a, something that just happens. It is something that he gives us a hunger for, but we have to respond to that. And we have to pursue him. We need to seek after him. We need to listen. We need to read his word. We need to go after him with all that we are. Now, one of the things, too, involves clay. And I'm just shape them into a ball because that's the easiest thing to do. By the way, this tool, and I'll be showing you a lot of tools today, tools that I use. This is called a bat. It has the, the uh, head of the potter's wheel has two little pins here, and they line up so that I can put those. And the, the benefit of that is so that the clay, uh, I can take it off without having to try to pick it up by hand. The water will evaporate out of this, but that takes a little while. And so if a potter is going to be very productive, he needs to, or she needs to be able to take those pieces off so you can go ahead and do another one. So I'm going to take this ball of clay that I have ready. And one of the things that I showed you a minute ago was that clay sticks to itself. It also sticks to everything else. David, Mr. Uh, Pastor David wouldn't like this, but if I threw this against the wall, this lump of clay right here would stick to the wall. As heavy as it is, it would stick. It loves to stick to things. So I'm throwing it on the bat, pressing it down. And one of the things, too, that is essential in being able to 
do this process is to be able to use um, different tools, and one of the most important ones is just a good sponge, something that will soak up uh, the moisture. Now, it works as a lubricant. The first thing that I need to do is to get it going really fast, because what I want to do right now, this clay is out of control. It's kind of the way that my life was before I came to Jesus. If you can identify with that, you know what I'm talking about. I was living for the world. I was about 30 years old when, I, when uh, a friend of mine started witnessing to me, and I didn't want to hear it. I did not want to hear. I didn't want to stop what I was doing and commit my life to Jesus Christ. But you know, uh, I read a book, and um, that book helped to show me things. Now I want you to imagine. In that process of coming to salvation, God has his hand on us. He is dealing with us. And it, sometimes he, put, he exerts a lot of force and a lot of pressure. And that's what I have to do. And I shake the clay. I squeeze it, make it tall, and I mash it back down. Because what I'm trying to do, and, I, and again, the term that a potter would use for what I'm doing right now is called center. And that's what I'm talking about, is centering your life in Christ. Folks, you know, if this clay right now were to start telling me, I did this, I centered myself, you'd say, that's crazy clay. That clay is insane. I didn't save myself. God's Spirit dealing with me, convicting me and convincing me that He is who He says He is, and that I need Him, in order to have salvation, it was him that did it, the potter, not the clay. The clay doesn't want to center itself. It doesn't mind being just real all over the place. But I take my hands, and now I put he, I put my hands on this, and it's just it's smooth. It's moving, it's, it's rotating, but it's not wobbling all over the place. This is one of the things that happens to us when we come to faith. Again, God starts to literally open us up. He's opening us up to the truth. He is opening us up to the truth about ourselves and about life and about Him. First thing I gotta do is I gotta take my thumbs and I'm gonna make a, an impression on this piece of clay, kind of make like a bowling ball here with a hole. And then I'm gonna press down deep on the inside and believe me, God presses deep, okay? Yes, he and he, again, he, with that Holy Spirit, he keeps watering us, and loosening us up. And then, in order to make something out of this, I have to stretch. So I'm gonna stretch this clay. And that's one of the amazing qualities of clay. And again, it will stretch like I showed you with that coil play just a minute ago without breakage. And so I'm going to keep it moist as I'm working with it on my hands. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting pressure outside and inside. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> All sides. I mean, it's like mm, every, every direction God is putting pressure on us. And again, uh, if he doesn't put that pressure on us, then we just kind of remain a big old lump. And you know, it's unfortunate when you see somebody who's been saved for 40 years and they're still a lump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the truth is, God wants to do certain things, but the clay does have, it, it does resist sometimes. I want y'all to be real quiet just for a minute. I want you to listen to the clay. Do y'all hear it? I don't. I'd be really scared if I heard this clay start talking. <laughs> but you know what? We think we can talk back to God and tell him, why are you doing this? I don't like what you're doing. I, this is not comfortable. I don't, this is not fun. I want to be like all these other people. And God says, no, you're mine. And I want to turn you into something beautiful. And so... Again, 
I'm using tools. My most important tools are my hands. One of the tools, by the way, I use things called ribs. Now this is a, a wooden rib right here. It kind of is a, a rounded side and a straight side that helps me. I use sponges. Oh, and I love my popsicle sticks because I'm a and what I use it for is to put pressure and to smooth. And right now, I'm making this into a bowl because I like bowls. I can eat soup out of my bowls. I can eat cornflakes out of my bowl. I can eat all kinds of good stuff. And I'm, I'm making sure that the, the walls of the pot, I mean, I, I don't want to eat out of a, a vessel that is thick as a brick. It needs to be nice and smooth because when I pick it up, I don't want it to be too heavy. Now, one of the things that I have learned, and you'll see on this uh, bowl that I threw earlier, the top edge is thicker. And I learned this from watching a video from a guy in England who was a very famous English potter. Uh, and and uh, this one right here, if I stop at this point, that'll make a nice bowl, mm -hmm. except it has a problem. The first time it gets knocked around or bumped a little bit on the edge, what's going to happen to the rim? That's what happens to us when we're fragile. You know, and there are some people, it doesn't take much bumping and, you know, they just kind of break. And so one of the things that on a lot of my pottery, especially if it's going to be a, 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 what I would consider a functional piece of pottery, like a bowl, something that is useful, that can go in the dishwasher and the microwave and be, you know, used on a daily basis, is I use a little technique of taking the clay because it's very flexible and I just bend it out like that. And then I come over and since it sticks together really well, I just go ahead and make that rim a little thicker. Folks, sometimes I think we need to listen to God and let Him kind of toughen us up. You know, if we go around just, if the least little thing gets us all undone, you're fragile. And you need to ask God, especially in my opinion, the thing that I ask Him for a lot is wisdom. <laughs> Knowing what's important and what's not. And not being so delicate that people can't handle you. That people can't be around you without you getting upset and breaking okay so i want because one of the things too i want the pieces of pottery to be beautiful and with a bowl i want the piece of pottery to be beautiful on the outside but i also want it to be beautiful on the inside okay so i spend a lot of time <coughs> working on the outside but one of the things that i do too is i work with uh this rib. Now this rib is not wood. It's made out of plastic. This red is the same thing. It's just a little smaller. But it has round edges so I can use this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to smooth so that the inside of the bowl has a beautiful shape. It should make a beautiful transition from the sides down to the bottom. It shouldn't go now I do that on some things. I just make a set of, um, of cat very small casserole dishes because my wife is so good at making big plans. <laughs> you know that. Um, well, but most if I'm if I have a, a beautiful bowl, I want it to be graceful and beautiful on the inside. And you know I think sometimes. We put a lot of emphasis on being beautiful on the outside because that's what people see. So, you know, it, it comes down to what's more important because you know what God sees? He sees the outside, but he also sees the inside. That's right. And I want him to I want him to look at me and and be proud of me. And so he he knows my insides. Okay.